So good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, very fascinating session as part of the 18th annual Capital Markets Conference uh, organized by the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Uh, this is a session titled Inside the Boardroom. It's a special interaction with Dr. Krishna Eller, Chairman and Managing Director Bharat Biotech International Limited. I think even before we go into the session, I would like to just place on record our gratitude towards the entire pharmaceutical and healthcare uh, industry, really our COVID warriors uh, for the huge service that they've been doing to the nation over the past 20 months, literally. Uh, the entire country is indebted to the great service that you have actually rendered during these testing times. Uh, and I think we are all looking to you along with entire world uh, to help end this pandemic and equip us with this vaccine. So thank you, Dr. Ella, for your personal leadership in this, uh, not only in the COVID thing, but even earlier, and I'm sure as you will, when you will, when you will start uh, sharing with us uh, in many, many other diseases earlier that you have helped uh, actually contain or even eradicate. Uh, of course, the COVID-19 has uh, acted like a catalyst for transforming our healthcare systems. A lot has changed over the last 16 months. More is going to change over the next 16 months and more. And we recognize that diagnostics is important, needs to be scaled. We have begun to manufacture equipments too. We used to be importing even simple things like PPE equipment and masks, and now we are actually exporting them at scale. And of course, it has really uh, brought in a paradigm shift of how all people, the government, People in industry view the health sector uh, going forward. I think we had uh, really, you know, in less than a year and a half, uh, India has currently three vaccines for inoculating its population against COVID-19. One uh, is being developed in conjunction with an overseas company, but the other, and it's really led by Dr. Ella, is a local domestic uh, manufactured uh, vaccine. And of course, we have the third vaccine, which is coming in from uh, Russia. I think what is important to know that normally vaccines have 10 years development cycles or more. Uh, Dr. Ella and his team and others have developed a COVID vaccine in less than a year. It's an extraordinary achievement uh, and even more so for doing it in a developing uh, country, which a lot of people actually uh, link with many disadvantages. I think this indigenous vaccine uh, developed in less than eight months uh, showcases the immense strength of Atmanirbhar Bharat. And it has not only made India uh, proud and made India uh, stand tall uh, in the Global Public Health Committee, it is also a testament uh, to India's emergence as a global vaccine uh, uh, powerhouse. We believe that. Uh, you know, Dr. Ella will share the effectiveness and the other aspects of the uh, vaccine. We understand the healthcare, World Health Organization has begun the review process for the data and we hope to get an approval soon. But I think it is really a proud privilege and an honor for us, uh, Dr. Ella, uh, that you have joined us uh, this morning and really uh, to introduce uh, this you know, very humble scientists who relocated from US to India. Sorry, I'm giving away something, Sunil, but uh, yeah, I will request the chairman of the CAPM, Mr. Sunil Sanghai, to please introduce uh, Dr. Ella and take the session forward. Sunil can't hear you. Sunil can't hear you somehow. You're on mute. Sorry. Sorry, I had put myself on mute with that. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shinoy. And I'll pick up the thread from where you left, which is humble beginning of Dr. Ella. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, uh, we have rolled out indisputably one of the largest vaccination program in the world. Many people contributed towards this program. But one man and one person who came to our rescue when you and I and the entire nation was going through the world's one of the worst health crises by launching a self-made vaccine for COVID, as 
the Secretary General mentioned, this is the only self-made vaccine in India. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Krishna Ella. He is the Chairman and Managing Director of an incredible company called Bharat Biotech International Limited. He leads himself the team for Covaxin. Dr. Ella, youngest of the nine siblings, the only person in the family to get educated, walked, sometimes cycled 10 kilometers to get to his government school at his village. He did his PhD in plant pathology. And now he is leading in human treatment. A chance meeting with then Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narasimha Rao in the US, where uh, Honorable Prime Minister was asked a question as to why Indian pharma does not innovate, made Dr. Ella thinking and his one-line guidance to his son, Dr. Reches, that all of us, we just have six inches belly and we don't need anything more than that. That brought Dr. Ella back to India. He returned as a determined scientist, as the Secretary General mentioned, to work on innovative drugs, which gave birth to this incredible company in 1997. Before I invite Dr. Ella to share his thoughts, I wanted to share a personal anecdote. As an investment banker, I was running a sale process for an Indian business of a global vaccine company. During the plant visit, Dr. Ella, within a few minutes, without even waiting for his lunch, which it was a lunchtime, suggested the complete revamp and change of the plant layout and the head of the production of the global giant at that very point immediately decided that th he is the right choice and he would sell his business to him. Dr. Ella, may I now invite you to share the next phase of uh, co-vaccine. When are we going to get nasal vaccine? Over to you, Dr. Ella. Um, I just want to profusely thank uh, Dilip Chanai, the Director General, and then my friend Sunil Sangai. I don't know much about the capital market. I don't even know this. What is capital market? I really don't understand the meaning of it also, capital market. We know the capital goods, but not capital market. So I, I think uh, Sunil Sangai is a, friend, a good friend of mine. We interacted with when you have a, acquiring a multinational company, and I looked at his passion also. And uh, every entrepreneurs are passionate. We don't passionate, we don't succeed in the life. That's what I believe in it strongly. I think, um, you know, I just want to thank Fiki for giving me an opportunity to be here. Uh, I would like to share uh, in a very non-scientific, in a non-scientific manner, in a simple language, uh, what the means of the pandemic, what that means of the vaccination, and how this will lead, and what will lead to the future. And I think, you know, the pandemic, there are 40,000 unknown viruses sitting in the, in the forest. We don't even know what that viruses are. There are 10,000 viruses which are zoonotic, means an animal virus can get into human. For example, rabies was a dog virus. The dog virus got into human. And SARS was animal. MERS was a camel disease, got into human. Uh, Japanese encephalitis was a pig virus, pig disease and got into humans. Like that, there are 10,000 viruses which are genetic. That means animal to human, human to animal can go. And what has happened is with our greed of uh, uh, of real estate and the expansion of urban, urban urbanization, what is happening is we are now getting a deforestation. We are going close to the, close to the forest. When we go to close to the forest, the whatever the animal viruses are there, it is going to hit human beings. And that is what we are seeing right now. And I'll give some of the examples what uh, happened in the, what happened uh, fast and what will happen also in the future. And um, you look at it, uh, the, the, the pandemic flu came in uh, 2010, I think 11, and 2006, uh, uh, chikungunya came in, Zika came in. These all given a signal to us that this signal is an indication that, yeah, you get ready there's something else going to come in. And, but what 
we did as a government and the public policy makers and the human manufacturers, we said, oh, it comes and goes, doesn't matter. We just neglected. So it just came in one blow. Um, so I don't want to get into the controversy of that, uh, the COVID issue, but certainly this is uh, one of the game happens in the world. And um, in 2019, uh, when Carnegie Mellon invited me a lecture in Bangalore, where our principal scientific advisor, Vijay Raghavan, is also sitting in the hall. And I did tell, pandemic is expected anytime. We need to be alert. And that time, many IT people sitting in that hall uh, in Bangalore, in the Lalit uh, Palace Hotel, uh, they were laughed at it. They laughed at it. This guy is talking too much. And, uh, and now you see in 2019 end, what happened. And in Carnegie Mellon lecture, I did mention, be aware of it, IT business will lose if there's a pandemic attacks. So what is happening in the pandemic? It is not killing too many people per se, but it's hurting the economy and uh, hurting the travel, tourism, everything is getting into disrupted. So that is more important than even health of the people itself. So we have not lost not too many people in life, but we lost the total economy of the country itself is destroyed. And I think that is where we need. You look at it, many of the neglected diseases are the pandemic. And many of the neglected disease are located in the developing world, like China, India, Africa, Hong Kong is also included. For example, SARS started from China. Pandemic flu started from China. Yellow fever started from China. Japanese encephalitis started from Japan. And uh, yellow fever, I mean, sorry, Zika, uh, chikungunya, dengue all started, uh, and HIV all started from Africa. So many of the developing world are breeding ground for the neglected disease and many neglected disease becomes a global disease in the future. It is not the US wants to control, US wants to uh, control the disease unless they control in the developing world, you can't control the global. So the point is that uh, developing world need to be alert and we need to take care of that issues quite aggressively and you need a partnership with the other part of the world together to make it happen. So that's a story and you're going to see more. Uh, some may come, some may come and show and disappear. Like you look at it now uh, in uh, Kerala, Zika started appearing. And last year it uh, Nipah appeared, two years back Nipah appeared. This is all giving a signal to us. The nature is giving a signal, hey, I'm coming, incubating here, and I might uh, wait for the right time to attack you. So that is a signal they're giving it. And I think, you know, uh, leaving a part of that, but this COVID time taught us as a manufacturer, as an R&D company, we are a very aggressive R&D company. If you are not a good R&D company, you can't be successful in uh, manufacturing also. You can't be successful in predicting the, some of the pandemic. Um, I'll tell you some of the stories what we did. Uh, we predicted chicken gunya way back in 2014, it will become a problem. And we isolated the first time the virus from uh, Kerala, uh, infected people, Tamil Nadu infected people. We sequence a genome and we said it's a chicken gunya confirmed. And that time Anmubani Ramdas was the minister and they were very skeptical about the chicken gunya. But we did say that and we are the first company to file a global patent and manufacture the uh, chicken gunya vaccine. When we asked for some funding, the many government agencies did not give me money for that. They said it's a useless vaccine. But now we completed with our own resource and phase two. And now CEPI, international organization, now funding $14 million to take up the clinical trial in Thailand, Philippines, Colombia, Nicaragua, and uh, Chile. These five countries, we are now going to be doing the phase three efficacy trial. And that shows that it will be chicken gunya also will come. Chicken gunya, it may not kill the people, but it causes arthritis problem. Many people who get infected, they can't even be normal life for next five to 10 years particularly old people, they can't even uh, walk properly. So joint pain, they can't even write with a pen also. It will be that severe disease as an orthodox, but it doesn't kill the people. Zika is, a, you all know it, pregnant ladies is affected, but there are also indication, intellectual capability of a baby also can be affected because this virus goes to the brain of the baby also. What will have a long-term impact? We do not know, but one of the predictions is IQ can also be affected because of Zika infection in the mother's womb. And so a lot of scientists still do not know. So that is a story what we did, but I want to talk, talk about it. Uh, 
Uh, many people think capital market, India is a generic country, and I want to change the mind. Please, we are a generic pharma company, but in terms of vaccine, we are getting into innovation mode. Uh, for example, we were the first company in the developing world to develop a rotavirus vaccine. We are the first company in the world, in the world, I mean, beaten US and the Europe, and not any multinational, typhoid conjugate vaccine. First time we have done, and we have completed human challenge studies in Oxford, UK, and then effectiveness studies in five, six, six countries all over the Africa and Asian countries like Bangladesh, Nepal, Malawi, Burkina Faso, Ghana, and India. So, and Pakistan, and Pakistan. So now, why the typhoid conjugate is also important? Many people are not responding to antibiotics. And you need to take care of those typhoid antibiotic resistance problem. And that is getting into problem. Many children in Karachi, Hyderabad, Karachi is dying children because they're not responding to any antibiotics, including cephalosporin. So there's so much of antibiotic abuse. You all know it, how much is abuse is happening in the country because there's no prescription. Everybody can use the antibiotic and that is causing a problem with antibiotic. We're going to see that as a future problem also in the food chain. When some of the animal uh, food chain is going to be infected with this antibiotic resistant bacteria, uh, the food chain is going to carry this antibiotic uh, uh, microbial population to your dinner table. That is going to be next future problems we anticipate. So coming to um, COVAXIN, co 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 which we developed, we are the only company we built BSL-3 production facility. BSL-3 labs are available. So don't confuse with the lab and production facility. Laboratories are all over the world. But BSL-3 production facility, nobody had it. And we were the first company in India to set up that facility for injectable polio vaccine point of view. We want to have... The, the injectable polio doesn't need BSL-3, it can be BSL-2, but we said we'll create for the national country's point of view, we'll create a BSL-3. We are the first company having a two BSL-3 facilities in uh, Hyderabad and three BSL-3 facilities in Bangalore for animal vaccine. And we recently acquired Merck facility in Pune, that is also BSL-3 production facility. And also we acquired one in Gujarat, that is also BSL-2 plus production facility in Gujarat, Akleshwar. So all that gives you strength for the future point of view. Any pandemic comes. Why I'm sad to sell this, it is not to drag my business, uh, but more to tell you strategically that it will be useful, these facilities in the long run for the country to protect anything. You can produce HIV, you can produce uh, Ebola, anything can be produced in this sort of facility. Since we created for injectable polio vaccine, it came in right and handy that uh, we can manufacture COVID vaccine. That's how we got into COVID. So we had a chance to have a contract manufacturing for two other country manufacturers. They have requested us, but we said we choose not to be a contract manufacturer. We choose the model of develop ourselves and learn the game of uh, uh, clinical research. Because we have a lot of experience in clinical research. We've done more than 100 clinical trials globally, including UK, including US, and including many African countries, uh, many Asian countries. We have done uh, a clinical trial, including phase one, you know, one of the African vaccine project we are doing with Welcome Trust and the University of Maryland, we have done a phase one in US uh, for IND application. So we have extremely experience on innovation and a clinical research angle. And these all expertise will be useful for the COVID. And that's how we built in Covaxin. And what we did is Covaxin is inactivated vaccine, but it produced IgG response. But in this sort of respiratory pathogen, you don't want IgG response. You want to shift IgG to T cell response. T cell means a memory software can be created in the body. That software can recognize whenever the hardware virus comes into the body, the software recognizes it immediately programs and produces antivirus program. And that antivirus attacks the virus. That's a simple logic. I can use it right now in this connotation. And um, so the T cell, the cell mediated response is very important because in children vaccine, you look at the injectable polio vaccine, we give zero first month and sixth month three doses we give, that gives lifetime immunity for a baby, injectable vaccine. So same thing, so we said we'll use this, we'll have an adjuvant which is required to create from IgG to more of a cell-mediated CD4 response. So we licensed one of the uh, uh, molecules, small molecule from NIH, National Institute of uh, Health, Washington, a uh, company called Virovax is uh, licensed working with NIH. We licensed from them, and we use that product into this one so that we shift from IgG to T cell response. 
Many people question us, oh, I don't have an IgG response. So don't worry about it. It is not required because we want cell mediated the CD4 response. That's a very critical for a long-term protection for a person to have. And my feeling is that is our click, that is our reason our co-vaccine is protecting against Delta variant. And we have done the phase three, phase one, phase two, all that we have done it. But in India, we are still traditional mind up people. We want to do phase one, phase two, phase three. But US, no, the, when they had a Pfizer vaccine and Moderna vaccine, they didn't do any animal toxicology also. They went straight to phase one and two human trial, and then went to phase three quickly. And uh, what we did is we did uh, all this phase one, two. When we started doing phase three, there was no disease burden. The COVID phase uh, wave uh, one is over and there was nothing. So we were waiting. Suddenly this second wave came. And that's the time the Delta variant was prominent. And in our phase three trial, we were the first company in the world to show that it works on the asymptomatic people and also it works on the Delta variant. That's how the Anthony Fossey from NIH said the co-vaccine works against Delta variant thanks to their adjuvant. But it's not the adjuvant alone. It is nucleoprotein that is present in this inactivated vaccine is also caused a cell-mediated response. And that is why it gives a long-term protection as possibilities are there. And we said, okay, we are doing COVID inactivated vaccine, fine. But how do you have a delivery system that can reach billion, millions, billions of people? We have 1.3 billion. That means we need a 3 billion dose of vaccine. And then we need a developing world, also vaccine. So we've been working on nasal vaccine, which can be given as a drop, two drops here, two drops here. And I showed to Sunil Sangha also how easy to apply. And we said, we do the heterologous thing, like co-vaccine first dose and give a nasal second dose or nasal, nasal will give it, or the nasal followed by co-vaccin, like that, this permutation combination, we applied for a clinical permission, and uh, so we're waiting for the permission once it comes, and we are seeing that as a big game changer, because uh, we are seeing a totally different immune response, which can last longer. So we predict that it can be last longer. Suddenly, in the last uh, two weeks, a lot of publications are coming in the direction that these heterologous of nasal is very critical. Why nasal is important? I'll tell you honestly. All the people who are, who are in the Bombay market who take injectable vaccines will only prevent the lower lung and uh, below. The upper lung and the nasal will not be protected at all. All injectable, including Pfizer, Moderna, all injectable vaccine. If Pfizer vaccine is protecting in US, then why they will get a Delta variant again? So you can ask the question, why is Israel again getting infection everywhere? That is because this vaccine, all injectable vaccine, only protect the lower lung, not the upper lung. So now you're getting your symptoms back again in the uh, mRNA vaccine, which they thought is a revolutionary concept, but nothing will be revolutionary. The smallest genome virus is more intelligent than the human being. And so I think, you know, what, what, what we are seeing is the nasal is a way that the COVID goes through. And if you have immune responses produced in this body, in this area, up to the upper lung, you are going, not going to get infection at all. And also, when you don't get infection, you don't transmit the disease to others. So what do you, why are you wearing a mask? You are wearing a mask because we don't want to transmit the disease. Suppose if I have a COVID positive, I don't spread the disease to others by having a mask. So that, what does is the nasal vaccine, is thus what masking, mask does, is the nasal does. So nasal will protect you not to get any infection. Since no infection happens, so you will not transmit the disease. First in the country, if you want to have better control of the disease, you need to stop the transmission first. If you don't stop the transmission, what we are doing right now, controlling the disease of a person, individual, so that he doesn't get hospitalized, he doesn't die of, because of the COVID. That is what we are doing right now. But transmission has to be stopped, that it can happen Unless you have 100% people are vaccinated, then it can stop a transmission. Or second is nasal is another one. Third is isolate of ourselves, everybody in the house, so that transmission doesn't happen. So this transmission has to have stop in me. Nasal is a very critical. You can look at the literature now of late. The nasal is going to be a key factor for the control of the disease right now. And that we are working right now. If the government can help us on this matter, we'll be able to move fast forward quickly and then get into the game. And also many people question us uh, why we are not increasing the production capacity. I will tell you three spectrum. One spectrum, mRNA vaccine. Second spectrum is a vector-based vaccine like Covishield, Sputnik and all that. Third is 
uh, you know, the uh, inactivated vaccine like Covaxin. Okay, the easiest vaccine to produce in the world is a uh, is a mRNA vaccine. Second easiest one to produce vector based vaccine. Easy to scale it up, easy to produce. Cost of production is less. But inactivation vaccine is the most toughest one. That is why inactivated vaccine is still used in children because the safety profile is extremely good. Vector based vaccine. The mRNA vaccine are showing problems in the children. Some of the adverse reactions are very serious. But inactivated vaccine, probably safest. And now we are completing a clinical trial from two, uh, two years to 18 years, also completing. So these are, you know, our co vaccine will be probably only vaccine from two years. It can go up to 100 years of uh, uh, vaccination, including uh, our prime minister's, uh, our honorable prime minister's mother, who is 104 years old. She took our co-vaccine, and we are honored for that. Uh, so I think, you know, this is the safest vaccine. But is it a very highly effective? No. I don't think now, based on the stories coming from the mRNA vaccine also, no vaccine is effective today. And that's a clear to us, to all of us. I think I feel that nasal will be another one. And third, we are working on immunocompromised patient. People who are taking a steroid, their immune suppression is there. People who are the cancer patient, their immune suppression is there. None of the vaccine will be, the mRNA vaccine will not be advisable to those people. And the pregnant ladies also a little scary. And uh, inactive, the COVID shield also cannot be given to some of the pregnant live actors, cannot be given to the, some of the pregnant ladies, uh, can cause some of the issues. So we are working with Thomas Jefferson in inactivated vaccine again, and that is getting into phase one trial. So in the end, I want to say that all of you should not worry. People ask me a lot of questions. Is the third wave is reality? But our behavior will determine the third wave is going to come or not. Our behavior, the way I'm looking at it today, is very bad. We are not disciplined people, unfortunately. So even if it comes, let's ask the question, if it comes. My feeling is, if it comes also, two things will happen. One, hospitalization will reduce, death will reduce. In this case, because vaccination is increased, and second is, there are zero prevalence is higher, and third is, hospitals also get paid up better. So we know how to treat better. So that is one. The second is, if third wave doesn't come, but at least sporadic incidents might come in, in a different part of the places. In one place, suddenly disease comes in, where they were all hiding from the disease. Now they are all being infected. And some, some cities, towns, which are not taking a vaccine, and they are not being infected, they will all get this 100% disease now, suddenly. And that may be sporadic, but TV channels might, uh, you know, exaggerate the issues but I think we need not to worry about that. But certainly we are prepared. But as a country, you know, as a citizens, we are not disciplined yet on that matter. That is a particular thick population where like Bombay, Delhi has to be cautious of uh, Hyderabad. All the cities should be cautious about that. And um, but was another question people ask me, is it going to be more Delta, is going to be more virulent? As a virologist in one of my major, as a virology and biochemistry background, what I can predict is the delta is all, at the extreme mutation has occurred. If any mutation that occurs, it may not be favorable to the virus. So you look at uh, South African uh, strain, it uh, very virulent, but restricted to South Africa only. You come to Brazil, highly virulent, but it restricted to Brazil only, it not spread it. Look at UK variant, it is uh, less virulent, but spread it transmission increased, heavily transmit all over the world. So you look at the same combination, Delta variant, it become highly virulent and highly transmissible. You see all this permutation and combination has occurred in a virus. And it is not to be worried about the virus. Virus bound to have this sort of uh, mutation is not to be scared. I, I think the many journalists are unnecessarily scaring the issues. And uh, you look at 1.3 billion population, our human genome is 100% same. Then if 100% same, then why are we different? Each one is different. 1.3 billion, each one of individual is different. That is because there are different regulations happens. In the regulation, it gives you different features, different intellectual capability, different characters. So if DNA 100% same, all of us should be same, exactly same, not so it is. So that clearly shows there is a mutation within ourselves in 1.3 billion population or 6 billion population, there's a mutation. So I, I think uh, not to worry about it, but right now, take all the precautions. Take all the precautions. Don't be negligent. And uh, and my feeling is we we watch for Deepavali. 
if deepavali until deepavali no epidemic comes we are through as a country and also we are coming with a different vaccines are coming in not to worry about it this all will really take care of the society at large i think we are well geared up now there was a little delay but now we are all caught up and uh, with the different technologies different ideas and all that and i think we need a uh, people help in cooperating on some of the spreading a good message so i don't know why many journalists have become a skeptical negative uh, attitude and they don't have to be so you need to promote some positive thinking in the country and i leave it there and uh, any questions are there i love to take it and thank you for uh, giving me opportunity sonil thank you very much honored uh, be present here dr ella this was brilliant and nothing less than this was expected from you uh, i have couple of takeaways we are uh, ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please put them in the chat chat box i will definitely um, put it to dr ella on your behalf um, the capital market is listening to you very carefully and we got the clue that post diwali the market will look very different the green color will become deeper um, so that's a that, that's a good takeaway um, in a lighter vein how have you decided to become friends with virus is because as you mentioned the virus is more intelligent than human because i i've been to your facility and i saw you the way you operate it's literally uh, you know the the entire system that the facility uh, is on the live virus uh, would you want to talk about that a little bit yeah i mean um, bsl3 facility uh, there's no vaccine available last year may june there was no vaccine available so we have to work with a 1000 meters fermenter with a live virus inside so you know like a vector based vaccine like serum institute making mrna there's no uh, virulent factor nothing will affect you but this one highly virulent bio virus is working in a fermenter anybody can it so we have a space suits people uh, you know uh, like a, you know people who are landing in apollo 13 in the moon that type of space suits with oxygen inside so so that you know the no virus can attack the human being with their working it's a highly contained facility i think we are proud to say that that india has got this facility i'm not saying bharat biotech is proud of it but i'm saying country is proud of that we have created this sort of infrastructure for the future point of view and i think uh, why we are friends to them fortunately virus is a non living many people doesn't know this virus is a chemical component chemical entity it cannot survive on its own by definition living means it should reproduce since it cannot reproduce we call as a non living and by definition virus is non living it depends on a human being to use the human missionaries of the human missionaries to multiply so we thought that's why any antiviral drugs we use on a human being it is targeted on the uh, missionaries which are used by the virus so therefore a lot of adverse reaction happens because we are attacking on the human system also so a human system to, to affect the virus multiplication so i think you know i'm also want to tell that unless we are friend we cannot understand the virus yeah. the beauty of it we need to work with them and we need to work like a you know you work with the enemy to understand the enemy enemy strategy that's exactly the same here as also virus he is an enemy we need to work as a partner as a friend and uh, understand them and then control like a lot of thing like even chicken gunia when you give an a vaccine will it cause a vaccine itself cause an arthritis problem we ask simple question uh, like that you know unless we ask uh, right questions and keep on thing uh, but i can tell you one thing today india's vaccine innovation is a global standard trust me on this one okay please is not that i'm talking for a capital market point of view you be restrained okay. only thing is i'm an indian and then company name is indian bharat biotech that is the problem but otherwise in 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 terms of innovation and strategies and infrastructure we are on par with any of the countries in the world that be rest assured on that that is a different from all other pharma companies and the vaccine companies are different thank you sir. that <clears throat> so now we know the reason why virus is your friend uh, dr ella i want to talk to the scientist and dr ella um there is one thing and you repeatedly talked about this um, some of the other sectors if you see for example technology we are at par with 
the global tech companies. May not be in terms of the size, but in terms of the quality and the offering. Uh, you look at digital and e-commerce. We are at par with the global companies. Wherever we needed intellectual capital, we are almost at par with the global company. Financial services, we are again at par with the global companies. Not in terms of the size, but in terms of the quality, the intellectual capital. Uh, as you are saying that vaccination program, which is more prevention than cure, and on prevention also, we are at par. Uh, maybe there are the different processes, but we are doing the similar thing. What is happening globally in terms of innovation? When do you think the healthcare, the 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 the, the pharma as a whole, will move in that direction? Because as I said in the beginning, your background, you heard. Uh, Prime Minister Narasimha Rao being asked this question as to why Indian pharma companies copy, right? And that gave you a thinking that, look, let me go down, go back to India and start work on, on innovative drugs. When do you think our pharma company is going to move towards that? I mean, um, the, the pharma company's cash flow is extremely good. They have a, the promoters driven. They have passion to do it. But somewhere something is missing. I don't know why. And uh, some of them are getting into unnecessarily into vaccine field, which is should not be. In that case, they'll be destroying their pharma business also. So don't get into the field. Like me getting into pharma, for vaccine fellow getting into pharma, I will rather destroy the pharma also. Mm. I think it's not worth the core strength of vaccine is totally different to the game plan. It is totally different knowledge base. And absolutely, it's difficult for a company. You look at it, uh, many vaccine companies, Europe, only two vaccine companies, GSK and Sanofi. You look yeah. at US, only Pfizer and Merck was there. Now third, maybe Moderna. Okay. okay. And, but otherwise, not many vaccine companies. So it's a core strength is very difficult, complicated. Every vaccine takes 14 years, 15 years. Like rotavirus vaccine, it took almost 17 years for us to come by. Typhoid conjugate, it took 12 years for us to come by. Uh, except the COVAX, yes. thanks to the, it's a pandemic, the government has moved much aggressive manner. And we have not violated anything in the standards in that. But still, the government moved so aggressively. That's why we could achieve that. Uh, but I think, you know, if pharma company should start visualizing, I always have a dream. If 20 pharma companies, yeah. each one develops one new molecule, yeah. and they make it globally sold, a patent protected, 20 molecules by 20 companies, Absolutely. A totally different game plan in the world. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's the game. The problem is the pharma company should think in simple language to think bigger vision. So if you think simple one molecule, if they think they can make it, but they think a hundred one time, they want to diversify here, 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 all those things. In that process, you don't achieve anything in there. Yeah. Maybe they want to satisfy the capital market requirement, but not the future innovation point of view. Yeah, no, there are multiple areas in pharma, as you rightly mentioned, not just the pharma, I'm saying in the healthcare, because there's innovation required uh, in the pharma, there's innovation required in the devices, you know, all these implant and devices which are there um, in the human body now more and more, actually. So there is innovation, there's a scope for innovation there. And we could see more domestic companies coming up in those areas, because again, that's another area where we are dominated. I mean, the, the market is dominated by global companies, J and J's of the world, right? Uh, there are not too many Indian companies actually going down in that direction. Uh, one, and I'm not a journalist, Dr. Ella, so I'm not going to ask these questions from the headline point of view, but purely from our own knowledge point of view that um, when you were going through this journey, as you mentioned that because of certain things, uh, you had to wait and wait for the second wave. I wish it has not come. <laughs> so uh, I, I, and probably this could have been handled slightly differently at the, at the way if the global norms were. What are the struggles and the challenges did you go through? Any, any, any of that, those obviously you would remember, but would you want to share with us? No, the problem is uh, in India, uh, both government the system and the regulatory system and even capital market and uh, scientists, medical doctors, they don't believe Indian companies. That India can do innovation. They don't trust. That trust is a factor is just bothering us. 
Uh, unless Bharat Biotech like companies, another five companies are there, but 10 companies, it will not be there. See, when some companies want to be contract manufacturer. That's a different business plan. I'm not denying that. But yeah. you want to be starting from beginning to the end. Unless you do that, you are not going to succeed in the vaccine field. That's very, very important. We learned from the rotavirus, typhoid conjugate, how to do clinical research. There's no clinical research test in this country itself. You see the challenge. The first challenge is that one. Second one, you ask me, how, how do I catch the caught up the first wave infection? If the regulatory agencies are smart, they should have said, you're doing phase one. I want you to do phase one and three combined when there's a phase one wave is there right now. This is burden. Come on, get in quickly into the uh, efficacy track. If they allowed that type of thing, strategy, I would have finished well in the first wave itself, this uh, my trial for efficacy trial long back. But then I lost three months after first wave, there was no disease burden. Vaccinated people has to wait. Okay, there was a lot of problem for us. The problem was, I've been given your placebo is there, are vaccinated, but country started vaccination. So should I take the vaccine? There are a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. And one death in Bhopal for placebo, or if that fellow drunk some liquor and he died, and that is the NGO started attacking us. I mean, the people doesn't understand the clinical research is done in very ethical standards, of global standard. And our clinical trial done by IQA is a multinational quintiles. Okay? But in spite of that, you know, questioning us. That's a challenging, very challenging. They don't trust Indian clinical research. Because we are not like pharma clinical research. Pharma clinical research is a bi -equalist. Okay? There's a more of a, a people admitted in the hospital taking a blood sample. But here, ours is a, a efficacy trial in a field situation in the village. 26,000 people. Sunil, I'll tell you, we are the largest clinical trial, probably Pfizer, Moderna, and Bharat Biotech, our three largest company clinical trial in the world today. Whatever the AstraZeneca has done, two clinical trials, 12,000 people, 5,000 people in South Africa is a smaller clinical trial. But in one geographical location, what Pfizer has done, Moderna has done, Bharat Biotech has done, three are the largest clinical trials in the world. Nobody has done it. Okay, I'm proud to say that India has done that type of clinical trial. It got peer reviewed now. Okay, and we have 11 publications from the COVID vaccine and not, a, and we have more publication than a Pfizer or Moderna. Okay, we have produced a scientific credibility also, but still people skeptical about Indian vaccine, Indian thing, and our journalist itself is a skeptical about a lot of things. And I don't know why they want to hug entrepreneurship of this country or they don't like Indian innovation. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, they have a freedom to do what they want. But what we believe is that India has to innovate. And I'm a strong belief that the next generation has to stay back in India. That's all. Nothing else for me. Yeah, that's a good that's a good statement. Uh, and, and the data has been submitted to WHO, right? So that we can... All, all, is, all has been submitted. We're waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we all, we are eager to... Uh, let you go and work on a nasal vaccine so that you can deliver the na nasal vaccine to us very quickly. But just before I let you go, two quick questions. One is, according to you, when do you think the entire country will get vaccinated? If you have any thoughts on that. And number two, See, any time frame for nasal vaccine, Dr. Ella? You asked a very important question. I think, you know, every person in this country should understand we have 44 crores of people are vaccinated, 45 crores as we speak. 45 crores people are vaccinated in this country. Do you know how much is vaccinated in the US? US is vaccinated 16 crores, one six. 16 crores are vaccinated with the Pfizer Moderna vaccine. Others are not taken. Mm. Okay. As a country, 45 crores. I think India is the largest country vaccinated people in the world. Oh. But we don't recognize. But we are asking other 60 people, 60 crores who are not vaccinated, we are asking the question, what is other Herculean task? But I'm, I feel, but my sincere interest is by March of next year, I think it should be, entire country should be vaccinated. That's my prediction. And I want to tell you one more thing, Sunil. Um, if, the, if the other multinational company, they do phase three efficacy trial in India, results will not be same as US or Europe. Okay, a scientific journalist who are intelligent should ask this question. 
if the same vaccine what has been done in when Wuhan strain was there in the uh, COVID year, the wave one was there, that time whatever the vaccine has been tested, that same vaccine is tested in the uh, second wave, what will be the efficacy? We are only 77.8% efficacy in our phase, our phase three trial efficacy. But same thing, if I've done it in uh, wave number one, I would have got 85, 87, 88% efficacy. Okay, there is no clinical research thinking in this country to ask this question. Okay, same vaccine, US vaccine, European vaccine, if they test right now in India, their efficacy will be totally different game. Absolutely, absolutely. Time, time frame for nasal vaccine, Dr. Ella? I don't know. The, uh, just give me another two and a half months. I'll tell you exactly. So because I just don't want to commit right now. But in two year, two, two, two and a half months, we are going to have a significant data coming out. The data will tell us. Uh, and also, it's easy to produce the vaccine. Easy to scale it up. The most so important is to scale it up. I can produce uh, 100 million doses per month. That's another green tick around Diwali time because the, by, right. hopefully by then nasal vaccine would be would be in. Thank you very much, Dr. Ella. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure after hearing this in the last 45 minutes, all of you like me would believe that we are in the safe hands and we are lucky to be one of those 45 crores Indians who have been vaccinated uh, and we are in safe hands of uh, Dr. Ella. Dr. Ella. Really, thank you so much for your time and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.